Hey, what's up? This is Odolena from Odolena Digital and today we're gonna talk about two of the newest Google Ads formats, Discovery and Gallery Ads. Hey, what's up? This is Odolena from Odolena Digital and today uh, we're going to talk about two advertising types from Google, so Discovery Campaigns, and gallery ads. Uh, this channel is my space, so I work for Google. However, here I'm just sharing whatever I want to share about online marketing, pay-per-click advertising. My background is in pay-per-click advertising, so I've used all these products myself uh, as an advertiser. Um, I am a specialist. I have a blog called odorena.com plus a book on Amazon, uh, how to advertise like a social media agency, which you can check from the description of this video. Uh, and today I want to just shed some light on these two ad types which are new from Google. So Google started announcing new types of ads and campaigns and innovations over the last couple of years. Uh, there's been a lot of lot of innovation in the ad space, especially as Facebook advertising became more and more popular. Um, Google's response was kind of like adding a little bit more formats, a little bit more simplicity and automation. Today I'm going to talk about these two ad types which are still in beta. Uh, there is information shared on the support pages and across different blogs. You can watch also some YouTube uh, keynotes about these two ad types. So they're publicly announced, but they're not available to all advertisers. So don't worry if you don't have them yet available in your dashboard. Uh, this will probably happen in the future. So uh, the main differences between these two types. First of all, let's talk about discovery campaigns. So discovery campaigns first, uh, uh, there is a difference. So here we talk about campaigns. And when we talk about gallery ads, we talk about ad level. So uh, the difference is that the discovery campaigns are created on campaign level. You cannot create a discovery ad because in its essential, uh, actually um, core of this format of this product is the fact that you have access to uh, more properties of Google that you, you were having access to with simple display campaigns. So you have access simultaneously to Gmail, to YouTube and the Discover feed on mobile. What is the Discover feed? The Discover feed is uh, basically on the mobile application of Google search on Android or on iOS. You'll be able to see a search um, in the search uh, results. You have a tab called Discover. So on this tab, you have uh, basically kind of like similar to the Facebook feed, kind of long um, uh, line of feed of uh, articles and information about topics that you typically care of. So these are all based on your intent, based on your search history, YouTube watch history, and what you have been browsing in the past uh, on Google's properties. Uh, and will exhibit uh, highly engaging, interesting information. And usually like when I check it, I really find things that are very related to my interests uh, based on, this is all using machine learning and information uh, from the time when I was researching things online on different devices, even just logged in with my Google account, they get connected and gathered in this discover feed. So it's a great place with a lot of interesting and engaging information. Compared to Facebook feed, I would say that it has a little bit more interesting stuff, not so much advertising yet, and the content is quite relevant. So uh, until recently, until discovery campaigns, it wasn't possible to advertise in this property of Google. And this is the only way that you can place your ad on the discover feed is with the discovery campaign. So if essentially discovery campaign is uh, basically one uh, campaign where you have one creative across multiple properties uh, and it is a display campaign. So you have uh, limited choices of what you can target. So you can target three marketing lists. You can target um, also uh, in market segments and affinity audiences. If you want to know more about display audiences, uh, click this link uh, above the video. Uh, I have shared a video about explaining each of the stages of the different stages of the funnel and which audience to use for when you're working with display on Google. Uh, and now what discovery ads are basically, it's a visual model. So it contains uh, a headline, a description and up to 15 images. So it's very, very rich creative uh, and the images will be rotated depending 
on uh, what kind of converts best for the user. So again, using machine learning to predict the most um, profitable combination of uh, image headline, description, logo, and call to action. So the call to action is uh, from a drop down menu. You cannot just create your own call to action. And this is part of also of the of creative specifications for uh, discovery campaigns. It's very important that you follow the instructions from Google, otherwise you're risking to uh, get your ads disapproved. Uh, so some of the main things to pay attention to, um, first of all, can you run remarketing uh, lists? So uh, are you uh, compliant with the personal advertising, the advertising personalization policy, which means is your business related to anything sensitive? So anything related to medical conditions, uh, invasive surgery or uh, kind of um, uh, doctors uh, can be uh, non uh, compliant with this policy. So we don't want to remarket people and uh, remind them about their health conditions. Um, no matter whether they are mental or physical, that's just not allowed now in Google. Uh, plus, there are also multiple other policies that you have to keep in mind. So misrepresentation, uh, misleading content, so all the banners that are saying, oh, you won't believe this and like some strange face. Uh, so just kind of clickbait type of content. This is not allowed. Uh, anything that can trick you that this text that you have as overlay on the image is actually a link. Uh, this is not allowed. So no underlinement, no uh, arrows and uh, kind of shiny click here type of things. This is not allowed. So you have the click to uh, call to action button, which Google will place wherever it thinks it will make more sense. Uh, and it will combine the assets that you have provided together with the image to um, basically fit in the different placements across these properties and uh, combine them in the right combination for every user so that you, you get the maximum out of these convert out of these ad types. Also, you don't have um, control on how many times the frequency, uh, how many times a single user has seen uh, the ad. This is all controlled by machine learning by Google. So you're not putting any frequency caps. Um, and uh, as I said, the audience uh, choice is a bit restricted. So in a nutshell, basically this is independent campaign that you create and it's a display strategy. Okay, let's move to gallery ads. So gallery ads uh, started off in the United States uh, in the automotive sector as a pilot. Um, so some of the examples that we saw on keynotes were with frozen foods and with cars. Um, and they are very, very rich, interesting ad types. So basically it's a huge image on top of the search result. Uh, so well, this is the main difference. Gallery ads are actually generated by search. So they are keyword generated uh, ads. So the way, the right way to think about gallery ads is basically imagine um, big responsive search ads. So an ad containing multiple headlines, uh, descriptions in a combination, plus an image. So this is a search format. So this will work with your search campaigns or dynamic search campaigns. Actually, I'm not 100% sure if it will work with your dynamic search campaigns, but basically it can be added to, um, to an ad group, which is containing text ads. On top of your text ads, you can have a gallery ad. And if your uh, advertisement is the one that is from the top 10, uh, which are selected to appear on the top of the search results, it's likely that the gallery ad is served as well. Uh, so I cannot go into too much detail on how this works because the, uh, the top advertisers, the one that typically appear on top of the search results uh, can also, if they're using gallery ad, this ad will also appear on the top of the results. Um, so uh, one main thing is that actually uh, when it comes to gallery ads, um, they are independent ad type. Uh, so you don't have to create one separate campaign only using uh, gallery ads because they work with keywords. Basically you will be competing against yourself because what kind of keywords are you gonna use? You're gonna use the same keywords. Uh, so then you, it's not worth for you to compete with, with yourself, like to create another group, another campaign with the same keywords. So the best way is to layer them above your current search campaign. Uh, just to have more variety in advertisement types. Um, and what's interesting is that uh, you have limited choice of images. So it's up to eight images, but the minimum is three. And this is due to the fact that uh, it's not only that you're charged per click. So 
So when someone clicks on your ad, but you can be charged also per swipe. So up to three swipes. So one, two, three swipes. This is considered equal to one click. So if someone clicks before that, then you'll be charged per click. If someone swipes three times um, and then clicks, basically the click will be free. Uh, you'll be charged for, um, for the swiping. So uh, this is how it works. Um, and it's the same models that you're using for your campaign. So you can use automated bidding, you can use target CPA, target RAS, or whatever you're using for your search campaign, or even manual CPC, enhanced CPC. Uh, all, of the, all of these strategies are going to work with gallery ads. It's just the ad types are going to be different and you might see more uh, clicks on gallery ads. Um, so the same type when you have responsive uh, responsive ads in your uh, on top of your uh, normal text ads uh, responsive ads are going to generate incremental so additional searches because they will make your ad a bit more relevant and they, your ad is likely to actually appear to search um, search queries where before you were not able to qualify with your static adver advertisements just like your your ad copy wasn't relevant enough so this will open more opportunities for your ad copy to show and to be more engaging. Um, when you click actually on gallery ad, it can expand downwards. So you can scroll on your mobile downwards or you can swipe sideways uh, on, on a desktop. So it's very rich, very, very big uh, and interesting image. So other search engines like Yandex, for example, have had images in their search for a long time. I'm not 100% sure whether they were performing well or not, but so far what I hear is that early tests with these ad types are going very, very well. Uh, and it seems that advertisers are seeing good results with them. So as I mentioned, both of these types are not uh, already fully launched. Um, basically, it depends on the country, depends on the timing, depends on the accounts. Some accounts can be white. Uh, so to remind you, here we have a display campaign and here we have another search ad type with the gallery. This is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Let's make this place more uh, interesting. Please add your comments, uh, suggestions for other videos or things that you want me to talk about and I'll be happy to share these. Uh, next week I'm going to be talking about a book, uh, so it will be a book review uh, video. So stay tuned and I'll see you very, very soon.